Okay, welcome. Welcome to the virtual transfer college exploration for all North and South Carolina students. Um, we're going to give it just about 30 seconds to let everybody finish um, logging on and then we'll get started. Okay, well, it looks like we've got a good group joining us today. So again, welcome to the Virtual Transfer College Exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by CACRO and StriveScan. Thank you again for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. The camera and your microphone are off so panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the the full schedule at cacro.org. This presentation will be recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, cacrao.org. I would now like to turn it over to the presenters. All right, thank you so much. So welcome everybody. Uh, as you can see, this session is all about transferring to the mountains of Western North Carolina. Um, so we've got three universities represented here today, Western Carolina University, Appalachian State University, and University of North Carolina Asheville. As you probably know us, Western App and UNCA. <laughs> we are going to just give a quick introduction for ourselves. Hi, I'm Beth Olumby. I'm with Western Carolina University. Um, I've been with the university for many years now, um, and uh, I actually have an office in Asheville, North Carolina, but I do work for uh, Western, which is about an hour away. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jane Dowdy. I'm a transfer admissions counselor and one of our associate directors in the Office of Online and Transfer Services. I am an alum of Appalachian, and I've been with Appalachian for about 12 years. And my name is Lindsay Prather. I am the Assistant Director of Admission at UNC Asheville. I work specifically with transfer students and I've been working in this position for a little over a year now. So we are gonna jump right in. Um, obviously we'll give some you know, general information about the universities, but we thought it would be fun to give sort of a mountains um, twist on this. So <clears throat> we'll be focusing a lot on what you can do at our universities to get involved in the region, uh, both in terms of academics and um, campus recreation opportunities and just kind of how, how you can connect with, with the mountains uh, culturally and, and geographically while you're, while you're out here. So uh, first and foremost, campus recreation. Uh, so obviously the mountains are a ton of fun. And I just realized actually that first picture is the same picture that is behind me right now. <laughs> So a lot of times when people think about campus recreation, they think about the on-campus gym uh, and you know maybe intramural sports. But all of our universities have a ton more than that to offer. So uh, outdoor adventure trips. UNC Asheville has our campus recreation team has a uh, actually has a leadership uh, tool where we can train students to be group leaders for these outdoor recreation trips. Uh, you can do hiking, camping, canoeing, kayaking. I think they went spelunking one year. Uh, so all sorts of opportunities to do organized trips. And then of course at, at UNC Asheville, you can also rent equipment if you just wanna go hiking and camping with your friends that weekend. Uh, another thing I wanted to highlight about our campus, we do have an on-campus bike shop. Uh, there's a great cycling community in Asheville. I know it's hilly, but I promise it's not that bad. You get used to it really quickly. Uh, so on-campus bike shop where you can rent bikes and, and they'll uh, help repair your bike if you'd like that as well. And then another special thing I like to highlight is our custom team building exercises. So if you've got a student club or organization 
or um, you know a, a class that you're in and they want to use Campus Rec to kind of train them in some, some team building activities, that's an option that you can access as well. And then of course we have tons of intramural sports, club sports, fitness classes that you can join, uh, lots of good opportunities to, to stay active. Um, so it's not, not just about academics. All right, so Appalachian is very similar. Um, you know, there's a, a rec center where you can rent this equipment and go out and, and do just about any kind of outdoor activity that you'd like to do. We've got 400 clubs and organizations, um, 800 intramural sports too. So there's just so many ways to connect. Um, of course, there's 50 trailheads within driving distance of campus. So a lot of really good hiking. Um, if you want to get out on the water, you can kayak and canoe. Um, we do have some really great climbing in the mountain, um, in, in the mountains. And Boone is actually uh, ranked nationally for one of the best climbing towns. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, climbing and bouldering that, that comes our way. Um, we are nationally ranked one of the best colleges for outdoor enthusiasts. So um, it, is a, it is a fun place in the mountains to, to live and, and go to school. A lot of fun things to do. Beth, you are muted. Of course I am. So <laughs> here's a little bit about uh, what we offer as far as campus recreation at Western Carolina University. Um, as you can see listed here, we have been named the top adventure college uh, for five years. In 2018, Western was actually not allowed to uh, compete in the competition, they, um, but we came back and won last year. Um, so we offer all sorts of outdoor activities. We do have Base Camp Cullowee, um, which offers a lot of uh, different activities that you can do, rent equipment. We say you can do pretty much everything in Cullowee outdoors except surf. So if you are looking for anything fun, um, you can do it at Western. Um, we also have seven rivers nearby, uh, the Western campus, including the Tuckasegee, which is right there. And every year our students participate in the Tuck cleanup of the river. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great, great area if you love whitewater rafting. Right. Um, so here we're just going to highlight a couple of the um, the opportunities that are specific to our region. So while we are all in Western North Carolina, um, we're all in different sort of different areas of Western North Carolina. So um, UNC Asheville is sort of smack in the middle. Appalachian is a little bit more north, uh, and Western is sort of down down in the corner. So we all have really unique opportunities that that we offer to the, the surrounding public and the community to our, our campuses um, and, and that you can take advantage of while you're here. So at UNC Asheville, uh, one of the things that we're really excited about that we established uh, here a couple of years ago is the annual African Americans in Western North Carolina and Southern Appalachia Conference. Uh, so Dr. Darren Waters from our history department grew up here in Asheville and um, you know, sort of saw that there was a lack of uh, study and, and research and um, you know, kind of highlighting of the African-American culture in this region. So that's a fantastic conference. A lot of our students do undergraduate research and present at that conference. Uh, we've got the National Centers for Environmental Information. There's a um, climate data, National Climate Data Center run by NOAA. Um, in that building down in downtown Asheville that our um, atmospheric science students can, um, can access and can use in terms of research when they're working on things like weather broadcasting and, and forecasting. Uh, we do have an observatory on campus. We've got uh, astronomy as a minor housed in our physics department here at UNC Asheville. The Lookout Observatory is just up the hill from campus. Uh, once a month, members of the public can come and our students and faculty will walk them through kind of what they're looking at in the telescopes and, and do presentations there. That's super fun. You can sign up for the wait list. It always fills up like within an hour of them announcing the date. Um, Bent Creek Experimental Forest 
So that's an area um, just a, about 10 or 15 minutes away from campus that has fantastic mountain biking opportunities. Uh, some of the best mountain bike trails in Western North Carolina are gonna be there at the, the Bent Creek Forest. Uh, so that's a really good opportunity. Of course, you know, hiking and camping out there as well. Um, and then some, some biological research that's going on uh, as well. And then the, uh, the Botanical Gardens of Asheville. So these actually are on our campus at UNCA, though they are uh, a public amenity open to the public. Um, and that's sort of like an ed educational wildlife trails uh, where they can, you know, tell you all about the, the native species that are there, both trees and plants. Um, there's a nice little creek that runs through it. It's my, it was my favorite place to study when I was a student at UNC Asheville, nice and quiet. Uh, and there is actually a moon tree that is in the botanical gardens on campus. I'm not going to explain what that is. I'm going to let you Google it and find out. All right, so we have some different regional opportunities and a few that are similar to uh, near Boone and Appalachian. So Grandfather Mountain State Park is very nearby. Um, it's some of the best hiking and backpacking around that picture to the left. It's beautiful. That's the Swinging Bridge. Um, so it's a really an icon in North Carolina and in parts of the um, parts of the trails you have to use ladders. To, to go up to the next level. So, you know, there's a lot of neat plants. It's, it's high, the elevation is very high. So um, it has a lot of unique plants and uh, lots of things that are studied in that area. We do have a dark sky, sky lab, uh, observatory as well. Um, it's open to the public. So we have four scopes in that observatory from 14 inches to 32 inches. Um, we also, you know, have one of the oldest and largest sustainability programs around astronomy program uh, as well. Um, sustainability, we're going to talk about in just a minute. <laughs> so astronomy is um, a really, really well-known program in Appalachian. And, um, you know, this, this observatory is used by students, but then also, you know, like I said, open to anyone who wants to come and, and view as well. And it's actually on the parkway. Uh, we also have a physics program as well that has a astrophysics concentration too. Um, we have three ski slopes. <laughs> so a fun fact is you can take skiing or snowboarding as your PE. So it's kind of a perk of going to school in the mountains where you've got some uh, good skiing around. Uh, we, I've had students that um, have worked for us who've taken it every semester <laughs> because the equipment rental is so cheap. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can ski every semester and just pay, a, you know, just a really small fee and be able to do it uh, without paying those really expensive uh, fees that it would cost if you just walked in. Um, we do have a, a bike park nearby, the Rocky Knob Bike Park. Pretty cool. It's really near us, uh, 185 acres, eight, uh, eight miles of trails in that park, and it's free to the public. So, and it's actually open to uh, mountain bikers and hikers as well. Um, and then I have, have to mention game days at Appalachian. Uh, we do have a lot of um, really enthusiastic alums <laughs> who come back and, and visit App and go to the game. So you can see the, the Vista with the, um, you know, the football uh, area in the distance. So this is actually homecoming weekend this weekend. And we are, we're socially distancing, but we are going to have some students that get to go to the game, which is really neat. Uh, not as many as normal. I mean, we are trying to be careful and trying to be safe. Uh, and then we do have a new river that runs right through Boone. It's the oldest river in the world. Kind of wild. Uh, it's even older than the Nile. Uh, so a lot of good fly fishing. And then uh, last, but definitely not at least uh, nearby at, w at Wilkes Community College, we have Merle Fest. So uh, Merle Fest is a premier uh, roots festival in the country. And it's, it's there, you know, right there, 30 minutes away. Um, they have 13 stages. Uh, it was named after uh, Doc Watson's son, Merle, who tragically died in a... Um, tractor accident. And Doc passed away not too long ago too, but uh, he, he won seven Grammys um, and Lifetime Achievement Award. He was an amazing um, blues, um, roots, um, bluegrass singer and songwriter. Um, so a really neat festival that you can go to every year as well. Okay, so um, 
what's special about us at Western Carolina. One thing, I, I already mentioned all the rivers uh, that are nearby. Um, but at the top um, right here, you can see a picture. This happens to be taken from Coloey. Um, all three of our campuses are near the parkway. So you could actually technically drive the parkway um, through all of our towns. <laughs> it would take you much longer, but you would have some pretty fantastic views along the way. Um, it is really quite beautiful. Um, I, a lot of people come up to watch the changing of the leaves um, in all three areas. Um, and as you can see here, um, the reason we're called the Blue Ridge Mountains is uh, due to a chemical in the atmosphere that the re released from the trees that we have just at the right level that allow us to have these blue colored mountains. So um, Mountain Heritage Day. So this is a huge event. It's one of the top 20 events in the Southeast. Lots of stages, lots of entertainment, lots of food, um, demonstrations. And it all has this Appalachian Southern cultural uh, appeal to it. It's um, if you are familiar with the Appalachian Mountains of Western North Carolina, um, we do have our own type of heritage and feel and approach to things. And it is really quite different. Once you come off the mountains and go more toward the middle of the state, um, it does change. It, uh, so that is one big nice event that everybody loves participating in. We also have the Cherokee Center. Um, we are very close to Cherokee and the Eastern Bay and the Cherokee Indians. Um, this is a headquarters for all outreach um, uh, towards for the Cherokee, Cherokee community. Uh, we provide a lot of services to the EBCI, um, the students and surrounding areas. We help with admissions um, and those, you know, those type of things specifically for a group. Um, the, we also have participate in the Cherokee Language Revitalization Project. Uh, we are trying to help keep the Cherokee language alive. Um, so uh, that's an, an interesting project. Um, our campus covers approximately 600 acres. You don't have to worry, you're not gonna be walking all of that. <laughs> our campus is actually fairly compact and very walkable. But yes, it is a very large, campus overall as far as the acreage. Part of that acreage um, is the forest, which is the Forensic Osteology Research Station. Um, this is also known to many as the body farm. So um, it's, a, it's the second human decomposition research facility in the world. So this is um, through the anthropology department. Um, you want to, um, you know, if you are interested in these such things, it's, it's really interesting and it's a very popular program as far as interest. However, I don't know where this is located on our 600 acres. Very few people do. You have to get into the program and sign a bunch of papers and not disclose the location. Um, they use this to study decomposition and different um, you know, types of situations to help with the research. We also have a football band or a football team, but the band, the Pride of the Mountains marching band, um, that's a really big draw. Um, we are an award-winning marching band. We have about 500 members. We're one of the largest marching bands in the U.S. Um, we have participated twice in the Macy's Day's Parade it, within the past five years, and that is very rare for a band to be asked to come back twice in such a small time period. Um, so there's so much more, but these are just some of the interesting points um, that draw a lot of people to our area. All right. Everyone's favorite question. So we get this all the time. What is the weather like up there? <laughs> Um, and believe it or not, it's not the exact same at, at all of our campuses. Um, but you know, of course, we all you know, are in the, the mountains. Um, North Carolina is an extremely popular state uh, due to our climate and our weather, and especially in the mountains. Um, we're actually, I, I think we're the, maybe the fifth 
fastest growing state in the country. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with, with the climate here. Um, so, you know, I love all the seasons and we have all the seasons in Asheville, but uh, I'm gonna talk about fall because that's my personal favorite. Um, uh, we have an annual tradition here on campus and actually today is the turning of the maples day. So turning of the maples, um, we have a big beautiful quad in the center of campus that is lined on both sides with maple trees. And our atmospheric science students uh, will, um, every year they forecast what is gonna be the day of the peak color of the leaves. And we schedule our turning of the maples on that day. And we have our students play live music on the quad. We have maple cookies and apple cider, and of course, just beautiful colors to look at. Um, so that's my favorite day on campus out of all of our annual traditions. We actually, we don't get a ton of snow um, at UNC Asheville. Asheville is actually located in what's called a rain shadow between two mountain ranges. So the clouds tend to dump most of their precipitation before they get over to us. Um, so depending on whether you like snow or not, that might be a little bit disappointing. I, you know, I always cross my fingers for at least that one nice snow every year. We usually get it, um, but fall is, is I think definitely un, unparalleled in Nashville. All right, well, of course we get all four seasons too. We, we are the highest elevation of all the three uh, colleges. So we probably get a little more snow than everybody else. It's not like being in the Rockies, but it's, uh, it's it, we tend to get it after the first of the year. So I do love some snow. So we didn't have as much last year. Um, it didn't snow as frequently as it has some in the past. So I'm crossing my fingers for a really good, good year of snow. Um, but yeah, all four seasons, but definitely maybe a little more snow at the higher peak. Um, so I grew up in the mountains, so I'm used to the snow, but I I don't like being cold. So <laughs> uh, one thing about Western is, yes, we do experience all four seasons. We do get snow, but we tend to not get too much snow or we don't get too, too cold, too hot. You know, we're, we're a, you know, a good temperature range for most of the year. Um, there are there is a ski resort uh, not too far away so skiing snowboarding is an option um, and we of course in the mountains have this beautiful flowering of the trees as, along with the beautiful fall colors of the trees so um, it's, it's really pretty on campus yeah i like that photo you chose this spring very close second to fall up here <laughs> yeah it, yes yeah, we're not quite as high um, up as app, but, um, you know, we still get that, you know, good elevation. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so next up, we're going to talk about sustainability on all of our campuses. This is a, a highlight and a really important factor for all three of our campuses. Um, so at, at UNC Asheville, we do have an Office of Sustainability. We also have a, a Student Environmental Center uh, where students can work with faculty and staff on campus for, um, you know, in terms of sustainability initiatives. So I'm just gonna highlight a few things here. We do have a few annual traditions uh, at UNC Asheville. One of them, one of my favorite ones, second to the turning of the maples, is the farm to table dinner on the quad. Uh, so this is our, our main sustainability event that we do every year to really highlight the work of local farmers and researchers in the area to try to, you know, preserve the beauty of our mountains and, and also make sure that everybody sort of has, has access to environmental resources. So this is a ticketed dinner. Members of the public can buy tickets. <laughs> excuse me, it sells out every year within um, a couple days, sometimes within a couple hours. We have a special guest every year. Uh, last year, we had a, uh, a Southern chef uh, who works in, in food justice initiatives uh, to speak about sort of those, the work that he's doing down in, in the Southern Appalachia area. Um, and of course, we source the food from, from local farmers. Uh, so that's an awesome day. The picture on the left, the bags of trash, that might be an odd picture for me to put to highlight <laughs> Nashville, um, but that was actually earlier, uh, earlier this past year. Um, so that's trash day, uh, probably come up with a better name, but um, <laughs> what we did there is the Student Environmental Center, they, they took all of the trash that had been thrown away on campus in a single day and piled up all of those bags on the steps of the library to visually demonstrate 
how much trash our campus produces every year. And it actually wasn't that bad considering <laughs> I, I would have expected a bigger pile. But you know, the highlight is really just to get people to think about what are you throwing away? And could those things be going into the recycling bins or the composting bins that we have on campus instead? Uh, so that's a great way to just remind students to, to kind of think about what they're throwing away. Uh, two designations we have that we're very proud of are we are a designated B campus and we are a tree campus USA as well. Uh, so as you can see on the right, we've got our UNC Asheville B hotel um, that our students help to create. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, a lot of pollinator friendly plants that are in that area to help sustain those. Uh, and then we use um, you know, of course, we use pollinator friendly, um, you know, chemicals when we're when we're working in the, the landscaping around campus. Um, so those things are very important to us. A lot of other cool stuff. Uh, we've got geothermal wells that are buried underneath our quad that actually help to power one of our science buildings. Um, our most recent dorm was a LEED certified dorm. Uh, we had a competition two years ago where each of the floors in the dorm competed to see who could use the, the least amount of energy for an entire week. Uh, so we kept track of how much energy each of the floors were using. Um, so just a lot of fun stuff and a lot of research uh, that's, that's going into that. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Appalachian sustainability and just uh, hit some highlights. Um, we are, we do have a really large program. It's one of the oldest in the country. Um, so we do have a major in sustainability and sustainable development. We also have the ability to add sustainability to about uh, any major. Um, we've got some sustainable um, programs as well or just some majors that have a focus on it. So for instance, we have sustainable business and we also have our um, programs in construction management, um, the built environment, they're, they're all sustainability focused too. So um, we have climate change embedded in our curriculum. I think it's something that attracts some students who are really interested in that to Appalachian. And so it's just really a focus on conser conservation and embracing you know, a sustainable existence for students and for staff. Um, so one of the neat things that I love to talk about is team synergy. So that's the, the interesting solar car that you see there to the left. Um, we um, started this program in 2013. Uh, we uh, compete in international solar vehicle competitions. So we, it attracts undergraduate students and graduate students from all majors. That's one of the things I think is neat about it. Um, because we're not an engineering school per se. I mean, you know, that's not our total focus. So these cars are being designed um, from a sustainability standpoint. Uh, and, and, you know, they've really been super successful. Um, you know, I think they use it really as a platform to research the most advanced technology. Just to give you an idea of some of our placements, um, we were in the American Solar Challenge in 2018, we got second place. Um, there and then the form <laughs> the Formula Sun Grand Prix we finished third place so those were just in the past few years I think that we had planned to go to an international event and you know I think the the COVID has um, put us on hold for that so we'll have to do that maybe in the future and then over to the right you see the wind turbine that's pretty iconic on our campus um, if you drive into Boone you see the this big wind turbine um, it's 152 feet tall um, when it was built, it was actually the largest in North Carolina. So what we do is we harvest wind flow to create this grid uh, electricity and, um, you know, it powers energy for two homes um, in the equivalent. So it does power energy on our campus. And then I just wanted to touch on the Southeastern Student Sustainability Conference. It's a conference that um, was hosted by Appalachian in 2020. So they actually got this one in before all the craziness started uh, early in the year. So we had 16 uh, different institutions who attended. Um, a lot of students present at this, this conference. Um, it's a lot of collaborative um, sharing of information about sustainability. So that just hits the highlights of uh, some of our sustainability practices. Okay, well, Western sustainability is a, a very large part of what our campus is about. Um, and mentioned those 600 acres. Well, yeah, all of that is uh, part of our uh, research and education. We're basically a, a living laboratory 
So we're constantly looking into um, concepts of sustainability and into the activities and uh, disciplines across um, Western Carolina programs. Um, research is a huge part of Western. Um, we Last year, our campus theme was sustainability and the environment. Um, so again, putting forth about how important that is to us. Um, we do participate um, in a lot of different programs. We have recycling, composting, et cetera. We do have an office of sustainability and energy management. So they're there to really help the campus move forward and keep these practices that we have in place keep going as well as implementing new ones. Um, we do participate, we are a Tree Campus USA. I'm hoping one day we can be a, a B campus as well. Um, I'm not sure if that initiative is underway, but if somebody wants to um, start that, uh, get that going at Western, um, you know, that, that opportunity is there. Uh, we participate um, in the cat tran. I know Appalachian has, I think, the apple cart. Um, but basically, this is to help you get around um, campus um, or down to Silva, which is the nearby town, um, with sh shopping um, outside of campus. Um, it also takes you up to our Health and Human Sciences building, which is part of the campus. and. But that's a big walk up the hill. So we have a cat trans constantly running for that. So you're not having to try and drive up there. Um, we have a, uh, <laughs> our, with our leftover food, we do have a project that takes this food to a local pig farmer. So that food is not going to waste. Um, we definitely uh, try to make sure that everything that we can has a purpose and not just goes to the landfill. We have been recognized by Princeton Review as among the most environmentally responsible colleges in North Carolina. Um, so again, with all three of our campuses, that is a, uh, a big deal. Um, we do have a, a very uh, micropolitan area. Uh, so that means that we do have a, a decent population, but we're less than 50,000 uh, people um, in within the county that Western relies is in. Um, down here on the bottom right, this is our egg. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> basically um, the electronic garden on the green. It's a very interesting uh, project. Um, it is a basically students could come hang their hammocks, their swings, and hang out, but it's a combination of solar power um, facility. Um, so students can sit there and charge their laptops, their phones, and it's believed to be the first type of its kind within the U.S. So uh, again, trying to be a very green college um, and keep that going. <laughs> the egg, I like that. The egg, yes. <laughs> All right, um, so academic programs. So uh, UNC Asheville has over 30 majors on our campus, um, but these are just a few that I wanted to highlight kind of while we're talking about the, the theme of the, the mountains and the region. Uh, so one is atmospheric sciences that I mentioned before. Um, students can, uh, there's a few different concentrations in that. We have quite a few students who have gone on to be um, broadcast meteorologists on local TV news and weather stations. Uh, so that's a picture there of, of them getting a, um, a tour with the, the weather helicopter. Uh, those students, there's uh, summer trips where they go storm chasing out in the Midwest. Um, and so all different, you know, all sorts of really cool activities there and some really neat scholarships available within that specific department as well. Uh, and as I said, that we've got a great relationship with um, the NCEI and the NOAA uh, building down in downtown Asheville so that students can have access to, uh, to those resources and that data. Uh, ecology and field biology, that's a photo there of a, a trip that the students, a field trip the students took just for a regular class out onto the Blue Ridge Parkway. And then we mentioned um, that the parkway does go by all three of our campuses. I actually once did ride the parkway from Kalawi or from the near the Western campus all the way to Asheville on my way home one time. Um, it was definitely worth it. <laughs> definitely worth the extra half hour maybe. Uh, but 
Yeah, so, you know, all sorts of opportunities to get out into the field. Environmental studies, of course, is uh, that's, you know, I think it's our second most popular major on campus. Um, the, there are multiple concentrations within there, ecology uh, and earth science. Um, you can major in environmental management and policy, which is a really popular one. Uh, so we've got the French Broad River here in Asheville. Um, that is the third oldest river uh, in, uh, in the world. And also I believe is the only river that flows from south to north uh, as opposed to from north to south. So a lot of our students, you know, will be out there in the field testing water quality, um, you know, doing as, as much as we can uh, utilizing the region's resources that we do have here. As I mentioned, we do have an astronomy minor with our Lookout Observatory right there on campus. We also have a good relationship with uh, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Um, so we have we do have an American Indian and Indigenous, Indigenous Studies minor within our interdisciplinary studies department. Uh, and you can also choose to take Cherokee as your foreign language at UNC Asheville. So yeah, similar, similar to Western, uh, we are trying to help uh, make sure that that language does not die off, um, that we do have uh, more people that speak it every year to, to maintain that culture and that heritage. So we're, we're very proud of that relationship. All right, so I wanted just to take a look at our, our programs. We have a lot of, a lot of majors, 150 um, in seven different colleges. So I just wanna hit some highlights. Um, we do have 20 health science majors. So everything from uh, nursing to uh, exercise science. Um, we have a cadaver lab in that new building. Um, and then, you know, healthcare management, for instance. Um, our College of Arts and Sciences um, houses our um, strong um, science program. So everything from, you know, chemistry and physics, which I've already touched on, um, environmental science, um, you know, lots of, lots of strong programs there. And, and then, you know, we've got the College of Fine and Applied Arts. So we, we do have some, some strong art programs that have been around a while. We've got um, graphic design, you know, a, a nationally accredited program, um, and then product design, industrial design, uh, some of the, some neat majors along that line. The Hayes School of Music is really well known. You know, you audition for that program and then you need to be accepted into admission as well. Um, we were founded as a teaching school, so we do have lots of teaching programs and uh, a lot of different um, majors, both online and, um, you know, on campus as well. Um, and then the business program, you know, lots of different programs there with uh, accounting being a really strong major in there, but really all of them are, are great. And then we have some um, neat ways to be an honor student at Appalachian as well. So it just really be good to look at the GPA requirement and the, um, the hours requirement, especially for like the honors college. You can't quite come with more than 45 hours there, so. So um, Western offers a, a lot of different degrees. Uh, we have over 120 undergraduate degrees, minors and concentrations, along with more than 40 graduate programs. Um, we do try to um, focus on the high demand degrees um, and look at trends that are current and upcoming um, as far as need, especially when looking at starting new programs. So. We have a lot of different interesting, these are just a few of the programs that have a lot of interest in them. Um, you know, we talked about um, some anthropology and forensic uh, science already. Um, engineering, that's a, we have several different types of engineering degrees. Um, so that's a big one. Um, we have uh, eight online degree completion programs um, in engineering um, does fall under that. We have some competitive entry programs such as nursing. Nursing is a high demand field. So they have um, higher requirements to possibly qualify to enter the program. So we of course encourage everybody to do their very best and continue to do their best. So if they are interested in one of these um, uh, competitive entry programs that they have the best GPA and courses to present themselves as a competitive applicant. Um, education, Western started out um, as a teacher's college. So edu uh, teaching uh, within the education 
of is you know kind of a our heart and soul um for uh the criminal justice program has also always been pretty large um our uh, we are only one of 20 institutions um, offering a bachelor's degree in emergency medical care and we were actually the first university to offer a bachelor's in the u.s for emergency medical care um, we do have a pre-professional advisor, so even though we might not have a pre-med program degree, our advisor will help you take the correct um, major in something such as biology or another um, science to help you set you up so you are competitive to apply to medical school, uh, veterinary school, uh, those type of things, um, law school. Um, and um, we have an honors college. Our, actually, our the WCU's honor college was the first residential honors college in the University of North Carolina system. And that began with 77 students in 1997. Uh, and we actually have um, honors residential halls. So these, to me, they're a little extra, you know, a little extra nice as far as residential halls. and. Um, I uh, definitely just trying to be competitive to be able to stay in one of those um, halls uh, freshman sophomore year uh, <laughs> is one of those things that I would aim for just for that. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot going on as far as degrees. We offer a little bit of everything uh, overall. Awesome. All right, so I do want to make sure that we leave time for any questions, but um, just real quick, a, a couple, you know, this, this is our chance to sort of highlight a couple of things we didn't get a chance to mention before. Um, so UNC Asheville, just some basic stuff. We, uh, we have about 3,600 students on our campus, so we are a small campus. Um, it is, I like to say it's, you know, when I was a student here, it was, it was big enough that I was still making new friends my senior year. Um, but the small enough that it felt like a, a community and a community. So um, I thought that was a really, really nice size. Uh, and then uh, two other things I just like to mention here, as you can see, 70% of our students complete some type of undergraduate research uh, and over 50% of our students complete at least one internship. Um, so we call those, you know, high impact experiences. Uh, so, you know, when you're researching colleges, you know, make sure that you're looking at stuff beyond just what's happening in the classroom, right? So those, those opportunities, I highly encourage you to take advantage of, of the opportunities, um, no matter what university you go to. Right, so Appalachian has um, a, little, a little over 18,000 undergraduates, a total of 20,000 students approximately. So we're sort of on the small side of large, I like to say. Um, so we try to really keep our um, experience in the classroom personal though. You can see the average class size is still 28, um, 16 to one student faculty ratio. That's something that's really important to us. And we want you to get to know your professors. Um, one thing that I think we really shine at is this, um, you can see that we, am, our students are employed within a year of graduating from Appalachian or in another grad program. So and I think that happens because of some strong internship opportunities that we give. So 7,800 plus students participated in internships. Just wanted to touch on transfer admission. Um, for spring, uh, we're fully open. You can apply anytime. We still have space. Uh, February 1 is the suggestion for um, fall, but you know you can apply anytime. It is a rolling admission for both. Uh, 2.25 um, transfer GPA is required for all college work and just 24 transferable hours at a minimum. So Western also has a lot to offer, as you can see here. Uh, we have a little over 12,000 students, so we like to say we're not too small, but we're not too big. Um, we are a top research uh, university, um, and we've been the top five, um, and in the top 10 for the last 13 years. Um, we have currently participate in a $500 tuition, um, which we're very uh, grateful for. That doesn't include um, any fees. Um, and we are uh, the Southeast number one outdoor adventure college. Um, as I mentioned before, we're, uh, we have uh, 16 division one athletic programs um, and just a, a lot to offer, really. <laughs> 
Um, thank you. So I'm just going to put up this last slide. Um, if y'all do have any questions, you can type them in the chat real quick. We will get a printout of those questions so we can reach back out to you if we need to. Um, but otherwise, Beth, I think we're finished. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, let me see if I can share my screen real quick. I think it's going to. Yes. All right. There we go. So again, thank you for joining us. When you close this window, you will see a link for a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for more additional sessions at capro.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as other session recordings at CACRAO.org. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.